Let's talk about coordination games. Coordination games are relatively simple. They're sort of toy examples, though they're immensely important in social theory and business in all sorts of contexts. Why? Because often it's important to get what we want and to achieve our aims to coordinate efforts with other people. If we just all run amok and do whatever we want, we're going to get in each other's way. Now, in these situations, there's nothing essential keeping us from all getting our aims. It's really a question of interfering with one another, but it's never the case that my achieving what I want comes at the cost of your not getting what you want. We can all get what we want. We can all win in these games. And as we'll see, there are often multiple ways of doing that. In fact, one way of defining a coordination game is to say there are multiple ways of achieving that outcome. So let's take a look at how such games work. I'm going to start with a very, very simple game. It's, let's call it the driving game. You are, imagine, James Bond, and you've been drugged and knocked out. You've been taken to some remote place. You manage through cleverness to escape, but you have no idea where you are. You jump on a motorcycle and you're making your getaway, and you realize you do not know what country you're even in. You have this vague memory of being drugged, taken in a car, and then taken on an airplane, but it's extremely vague. You have no idea where you are. You don't know whether you're in Britain, or Ireland, or France, or Germany, or somewhere else. Now, you realize, as you're driving on this remote country road on your motorcycle, that you're looking around, you see no road signs, and you don't know whether people in this area drive on the right or drive on the left. So what do you do? You realize that it's a fairly narrow road if you are zooming along and there's very limited visibility. So if you're zooming along and somebody comes in your lane, you're going to be in deep trouble. So you don't want that to happen. What do you do? Well, it's a difficult problem because you have no idea what the general convention is and what to expect from anybody else who might be on that road. So, let's see what the options are in general here. And you could think of this, if you don't like the James Bond scenario, a scenario that planners face when they're designing a traffic system. They've got a plan for people driving on the right or driving on the left. If you simply allow people to do whatever they want, there's going to be big trouble. So what are our options? Well, here we are. This is Bond, let's say. And he has two choices. He can drive on the right or drive on the left. Now, other people are facing this choice. Similarly, they have a choice between driving on the right and driving on the left. Now, what happens if Bond is driving on the right and other people in that area choose to drive on the right, either because that's the custom or there's an explicit law? Well, then that's fine, right? They both go like this. They should succeed. So, in that case, both parties are going to do just fine. And here I'll just indicate that with a check mark to indicate no accident, things work out well. Similarly, if both drive on the left, if Bond chooses to drive on the left, and he chooses correctly, people in that area drive on the left, as they do, for example, in Great Britain or in Australia, then, terrific. Things work out for all parties. But what happens if Bond chooses to drive on the right when the convention is to drive on the left? Well, if he encounters another car, he's going to be in terrible trouble. And so will that with the car because they're going to collide with Bond. And so at this point, very bad things happen to both parties. And the same thing is true if he chooses to drive on the left, assuming he's still in Britain, for example, and people in this area drive on the right. Badness happens. So, if we look at the results here, and by the way, indicating this, what I've got is Bond's results <laughs> in that first column, and then, or the first member of the pair, and then other people's results as the second members of the pair. What's going on here is we get a matrix that indicates outcomes for every possible option. So both drive on the right, the outcome is, well, no accident, things are good. Same if they both drive on the left. If one's driving on the one side and one's driving on the other, boom, badness happens. And so we've got something here we can refer to as an outcome matrix. That tells us the outcome for each combination of actions chosen by the various participants in the game. Now, in this case, we don't yet have a, an official game. We have something that is approximating a game, but we don't know how serious the payoffs are. And so we need to get from those outcomes 
various payoffs, that is, various utilities. How good or bad is the result? Ideally, we would want some kind of cardinal number to represent just how bad the accident would be, how important it is for both parties that they get where they're going, and so forth. I'm not going to bother to do that here. We'd have to fill in too much about the background of the scenario uh, to tell us who Bond is likely to meet, how serious the accident might be, and so forth. So let's leave all that out and just for the moment focus on the outcome matrix. One thing we can say about this is that very clearly Bond would prefer to get where he's going than to be in an accident and vice versa for this person. So we can look at these options and say, well, Bond has a choice. Now he can't choose this. He doesn't know whether people in this area drive on the right or on the left. He can't do anything to determine that. So we can't have Bond affecting this choice. But Bond can affect this choice. So Bond is in control of these alternatives. Now he's looking at this, and then let's suppose, though it won't matter in this case since outcomes are similar for both parties, that he is self-interested in just looking at the outcome for him. It's very clear which he prefers if he examines these, right? He's looking at no accident versus accident. Bond clearly prefers not to be in an accident. So let's draw a little arrow to indicate Bond's preference here an arrow from the less desirable outcome to the more desirable outcome. And similarly, we can look at these two. Again, he has no choice about which column he's in, but he does have a choice among the rows. And so in this case, well, accident versus non-accident, he clearly prefers not to be in an accident. So here the arrow points downward. Now we can do the same for our other participant. Whoever else might be on that road has no choice about whether Bond is driving on the right or on the left has no control over that, but does have control over which side they're driving on. Now, in this area, presumably there's a custom or a law that determines which side, so they're not really choosing very much. When I drive my car, I don't go out and think, well, what will it be today, right or left? It's determined by the conventions where I live. But in this case, you might say, well, nevertheless, they have a strong preference about these outcomes. Here, accident, they are non-accident. They have a choice between these two. They clearly prefer that. So we'll assume that the others here are represented in orange. And the preference between these two, accident and non-accident, well, they prefer not to be in an accident. So the preferences go like that. Well, if we look at where the arrows point, they tell us something very interesting. Because follow them where they go, essentially, and you see, well, here we have arrows leading to this outcome, where both are driving on the right. We also have arrows that lead and terminate in this outcome, where both are driving on the left. And if we find ourselves in this situation, or in that situation, where these vehicles are headed on right toward each other, what's going to happen? Well, presumably one or the other driver is going to try to evade the accident. And indeed, I've been driving on roads in Scotland, and let me tell you, it's a little bit scary if you're used to an American system of driving on the right to suddenly be driving on the left. Your instincts are all wrong. You're shifting gears with your left hand, which is weird for an American. And when you see a car coming toward you, your instinct is to pull to the right. But of course, that's not going to work because the other person's instinct are to pull to their left, and that points you in the same direction. Luckily, in the area of Scotland I was in, there were a lot of tourists, and the other person understood, ah, American, and saw me veering off that way, and then went to the other side, so I actually passed them on the right, which was a violation of the Scottish customs, but nevertheless a very generous act on the part of that person who understood that, yes, this person has all the wrong instincts. In any case, we're going to say, clearly preferred are outcomes where we all drive on the right, or we all drive on the left. Now what we do to solve this kind of coordination game is to make a decision between those two. But now I want to talk a little bit about what's going on in this game because some of the most important concepts of game theory are already revealed here. The first thing is that Bond doesn't know which side to drive on. He will be better off driving on the right if other people there are driving on the right, but he'll be better off driving on the left if other people are driving on the left. So what is Bond's strategy here? What should he do? Should he choose to drive on the right or on the left? It depends on what other people are doing. He can't say, no matter what other people do are doing, I'm better off doing one of these or the other. Instead, 
He's in a situation where he doesn't know. So we can come up with a key concept of game theory, and that is the idea of a dominant strategy. Strategy is a dominant strategy for a player in a game if they are better off using that strategy, <laughs> they're better off making that choice than any other alternative, no matter what other players are doing. So you might say it's best no matter what. A dominant strategy for a player is best for that player, no matter what others do. In this case, Bond does not have a dominant strategy. By the way, a strategy that is dominant is said to dominate the other possible choices, and those choices are dominated by this strategy. Well, in this case, there is no dominant strategy. Whether Bond should drive on the right or on the left depends on what other people are doing. There is no choice that's best for him, no matter what others do. So in this game, there is no dominant strategy for either player, because it's the same for the others. There are, nevertheless, two important outcomes here. This one, where both drive on the right, and this one, where both drive on the left. In a Nash equilibrium, no player can improve their own situation unilaterally. No player can make a change just in what they're doing, keeping fixed what everybody else is doing, and make themselves better off. So Bond, for example, cannot make himself better off by deciding to drive on the left if other people are driving on the right. He's going to be worse off, in fact, in this case, and so will everybody else. And the same thing is true of the others. So nobody in these situations can improve the situation by changing what they do, leaving what everybody else is doing fixed. On the other hand, if Bond is driving on the left and everybody else is driving on the right, then Bond can improve his situation unilaterally by switching to do what the others are doing. So this is not a Nash equilibrium, but this one is. And I've circled the two Nash equilibria here. Well, that is one way of understanding a coordination game. There are multiple Nash equilibria. And that means, typically, that at least one player does not have a dominant strategy, has to coordinate with the others to get a good outcome. And here, you might say, since this is presumably fixed by the conventions or the laws of the place, Bond had better adjust his strategy to what's going on around him. If he starts out making a choice, and here there's no reason to choose one or the other, so it's going to be arbitrary, Bond, let's say, decides, since he vaguely remembers being on an airplane, he's probably been taken out of England, and so he decides to drive on the right. But then he sees, wait a minute, people here are driving on the left. He better quickly make the adjustment and move to, from here to here. Move to a not Nash equilibrium. On the other hand, if he's finding that everybody's driving in such a way that there's no problem, then he better keep doing what he's doing. He cannot improve his situation by changing. Well, this game is very simple, but we've already seen a couple of the key ideas of game theory. The idea of a dominant strategy. A player has a dominant strategy in a game if that option is best no matter what the others are doing. Here, neither has a dominant strategy. What's best for each depends on what the others are doing. But there are two Nash equilibria. In a Nash equilibrium, no player can improve their situation unilaterally keeping fixed what everybody else is doing, and just changing their own behavior. And so, here we have one where both are driving on the right, here we have one where both are driving on the left. In situations like this, where there are multiple Nash equilibria, we look at them, and sometimes one is clearly better than the other. In this game, they're not. They're both cases where there are no accidents. There's nothing intrinsically better about driving on the right as opposed to driving on the left. They both work fine. But it's important that a society or that an organization, if we're talking about a policy internal to an organization, make a choice and tell people, look, the convention is to do it this way because it only works. We only achieve a Nash equilibrium if everybody is doing that. A couple of important morals we learn from this little story. One is play a dominant strategy if you have one. That's not available to the players here. If it worked out best for Bond to drive on the right no matter what the others were doing, then great, you should drive on the right. Here, nobody has that kind of strategy. They've got to adapt to what the other players are doing or coordinate with them, hence the name of this kind of game. Second important thing is seek a Nash equilibrium. Once you're in a Nash equilibrium, don't try to get out of it. You can't unilaterally improve your situation. The only way to improve your circumstance, here there's no way to do it at all given the structure of the game, but in some games there will be Nash equilibria that are not so great. 
and what would have to happen then is coordinated action to get the better one because there's no way one player unilaterally can do that. When things suck, <laughs> they usually suck in a way that's a Nash equilibrium. Why? Well, why are they bad? Everybody can look at a situation and say, yeah, this is a lousy situation, and yet nobody can do anything about it. That happens all the time in societies, in organizations, even in individual people's lives. And how does it happen? Well, it happens because no player in such a situation can improve their situation by themselves. They would have to coordinate. People would have to act together. And often that coordination is hard. In a human relationship between two people, it's hard enough. But put multiple people in, put millions of people in, hundreds of millions, it's immensely difficult to achieve that kind of coordination. And so it's easy for things to really be pretty bad, and yet nobody really can manage to improve the situation by acting alone. In fact, they're going to make themselves typically worse off, and there will be no benefit to their doing that, so nobody has an incentive to change the situation. The only way to get out of that bad equilibrium is to work together with other people. But that's a real challenge, and we're going to talk much more about games where we're in that kind of situation. We've got a Nash equilibrium, but it's not a very good one. How do we improve it?